Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Let us pray. Help us to look to the past with gratitude and to the future with hope. We remember this day those who have gone before us, who have labored not for themselves alone, but with the vision of building for the future, a world better than they had known. Inspire in us also a like vision that we too might labor for things beyond ourselves, that ourselves might be dedicated to high purposes and grand horizons. Make us unafraid of hopes and dreams. Release us from cynicism and despair. Teach us to be realistic about our limitations, but never to lose hope in our potential to transcend them. Amen. 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 All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Wibley. No. Mr. Riddick, you missed that. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> Thank you. That's, sorry, that's it. That was good, too. That's it. She gets to okay. do time as well. Okay. Tommy okay, all right, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> Clark will call the roll, please. Okay. Ms. Graves? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagle? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to excuse Mr. Wynn, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? I guess. Mr. Frame? <laughs> Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? I'm sorry. Mr. Frame? <laughs> Uh, the clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have all of you here. For the benefit of those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process which we're going to follow tonight is the first thing. Uh, on the agenda is the invitation uh, to bid on a uh, parking agreement. We'll take that up first. After that, we'll move directly to the regular agenda items. We have 33 or 34 regular agenda items, and we're going to vote on all these matters in just the way they are numbered uh, on the printed docket. If anyone wants to, to address the council on any of these matters, and a number of you have signed up, all you needed to do was sign a slip of paper with the clerk has made available in the lobby behind the council chambers before the meeting began. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if you'd like to address the council on new business, you'll be given that opportunity. But again, you must have signed a slip of paper uh, that the clerk made available. So there are no ceremonial matters where we got, uh, where you're going to move directly then into the um, invitation to bid, Mr. Uh, clerk. Yes, sir. This is um, an item uh, for the receipt of bids pursuant to invitation to bid and notice of public hearing um, to accept bids for a long-term garage parking agreement with a term of 20 years for the lease of 400 parking spaces in the parking garage located at 130 Bank Street in the city of Norfolk, subject to certain terms and conditions. All right. How many bids have been received? One. Please read the bid and mark it for identification. City Walk 1 LLC has submitted the following bid, um, and the bid is for leasing 400 spaces in the parking garage located at 130 Bank Street in the city of Norfolk. I've marked it for identification as City Walk 1 LLC bid 2916. Thank you. Are there any other bids? Any other additional bids? Okay, if there are no additional bids, I will declare the bidding closed. Is there any member of the public who wishes to be heard on this matter? There no member, if there is no member of the public who wishes to be heard, I, do, I will declare the public hearing closed. Is there a recommendation from the city staff regarding the bid received from City Walk 1 LLC? Yes, city staff recommends that the bid by City Walk 1 LLC be accepted and the parking garage agreement awarded to City Walk 1 LLC. Okay, is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, I will ask the city clerk to read the proposed ordinance. 
An ordinance accepting the bid submitted by CityWalk 1 LLC for a long-term garage parking agreement with a term of 20 years for the lease of 400 parking spaces in the parking garage located at 130 Bank Street, City of Norfolk. Dispense with, roll, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance approving an encroachment agreement with EDR Enterprises, Inc., doing business as Pimento Island Bistro for property located at 1902 Collie Avenue. This was uh, continued from the January 26th meeting. Yeah, we ready to vote? Okay, you can call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? I'd like to thank Mr. Homewood for his help on that. Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2. A resolution to designate the area to the east of St. Paul's Boulevard, to the south of East Princess Anne Road, Gough Street and St. Julian Avenue, to the west of Roberts Road and Park Avenue, and to the north of Holt Street and the southernmost portion of Tidewater Drive in the city of Norfolk as the Greater St. Paul's Revitalization Area. All right, and now there's been a request uh, from the administration to withdraw the matter. So Sir. the motion is to withdraw, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, R3. An ordinance authorizing the City of Norfolk to enter into a cooperation agreement for the payment of certain funds to enable the Economic Development Authority of the City of Norfolk to enter into and fulfill its obligations under a grant amendment with ADP LLC. Um, there are four members of the public who have signed up to address the Council in this matter. Um, I want to call your name if you come to the podium and identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name, please and your present home address, and then please limit your remarks to three minutes. Chuck McPhillips. Good evening, Mayor, honorable members of council. I'm Chuck McPhillips, president of Greater Norfolk Corporation. I'm here to uh, express our strong support for this uh, agenda item. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Barry Bishop, the executive director of Greater Norfolk Corporation, to make more detailed remarks in support of this, if that'd be, that'd, that'd be okay. fine. Thank you. Mr. Bishop. Good evening. Uh, to say that we would uh, welcome automatic data processing to Norfolk and the region. Bishop, the, I'm sorry. Your, your name and. Yeah, Barry Bishop, okay. uh, 9508 25th Bay Street. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, to say that we would uh, welcome automatic data processing to Norfolk and the region with open arms would be an understatement. Start with the fact that ADP, as you know, is the 251st on the Fortune 500 list of largest U.S. Uh, companies, the largest provider of human resource services in North America, Europe, Latin America, and the Pacific Rim, handling payrolls for one in six American workers, a company with a sterling credit rating, AA by most standard and poor's and Moody's, a company with a total of 55,000 employees, 2,000 of whom, according to the pilot, would be here in downtown Norfolk, and a company, I might add, with an exceptional reputation the top-rate company in financial data services and Fortune magazines, the, most, the world's most admired companies in 2015, Chief Executive Magazine, 40 Best Companies for Leaders List, Diversity Inc. Magazines, Top 50 Companies for Diversity, Working Mother Magazines, 100 Best Companies for Working Mothers, Best Companies for Multicultural Women, IDG, Computer World Magazine, List of Best Places to Work in Information Technology. could go on and on. But to quote the uh, Virginia Pilots editorial over the weekend, what would be the largest economic development achievement in Hampton Roads in decades suggest a brighter economic future for Norfolk and by extension for all of Hampton Roads. According to the pilot, ADP found itself drawn to downtown Norfolk for its wild workforce, its community's growing vibrancy, and its relatively affordable cost of living. Uh, the editorial goes on to say that supporting and enabling those things are the nearby colleges and universities, ODU, Tidewater Community College, Norfolk State, a growing critical mass of tech frame millennials, an interconnected creative community, including the Neon Arts District, housing options that include new, adapted, and historic, transportation alternatives that include light rail, walkable streets, and increasingly bike-friendly paths. And I guess maybe the point I'd like to make is, all of this was made possible because of decisions that this council made and councils made uh, before you. Uh, as the pilot editorial concludes, Norfolk's investments in downtown and its mission as a 21st century city appear poised to make a difference for the city's future. That's all any place could hope for and to which we say we could not agree more. Thank you. Thank you. Rodney Jordan.
Good evening, Rod. Good evening, uh, Rodney Jordan, 2506 uh, Myrtle Avenue. I'd like to uh, first echo the comments that were made uh, before me. I think this is a excellent uh, economic development project for the city and like to congratulate the council and administration, all those who have been involved with it. There are two additional uh, items I would like for the council and administration to consider moving forward. Uh, having read the, uh, the agreement that you worked out with with the Economic Development Authority, one, to the extent that there are uh, community benefits agreements that can ensure that if there are opportunities for new jobs, that those new jobs can go towards uh, Norfolk residents and that we particularly target those neighborhoods and those areas where we know we have uh, workforce development training opportunities as well as any opportunity for uh, small historically underutilized businesses to also engage in uh, contracting opportunities with this with this company. I think this is important since we are providing these types of incentives that we also look for ways that we can grow our small business community as a part of that. The second uh, item as you have uh, realized uh, taxes, as the city has realized taxes, one of the things that this council created coming out of the Poverty Commission was the Housing Trust Fund. And we've had this continuing conversation about trying to have uh, workforce housing in all parts of the city. As you know, right now, we tend to concentrate our low-income housing in one part of the city and not necessarily have housing opportunities across the city. So to the extent that you can look at earmarking parts of the revenue that may come off of this project to the Housing Trust Fund to provide additional workforce housing and affordable <coughs> housing opportunities in Super Ward 6 and in other parts of the city that right now may not have a fair share of opportunity, I would also like to encourage you to do that as well. Congratulations again. That's a good Thank idea. You. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you. Can we have Marcus okay. model that for us? It's possible he can figure out numbers and other solutions on that. Can you do that, Marcus? Just pro forma and figure things out, such as that. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Okay, uh, Mary Miller. Marcus. Good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. Um, my name is Mary Miller, uh, president of the Downtown Norfolk Council. Home address is 7600 Glen Eagles Road, Norfolk. I urge your approval of this ordinance tonight that will incentivize a significant number of jobs in our city. This opportunity will benefit Norfolk neighborhoods and the Hampton Roads region by diversifying our economy, enhancing our reputation as a global competitor, and most importantly, validating the trends that younger people and millennials are choosing to locate in the urban core to live, to work, and to play. Norfolk's leadership has held to a long-term vision implemented through strong planning principles and strategic investment. ADP's interest in Norfolk reinforces that this thoughtful approach supports our collective goal of being the most dynamic and authentic urban waterfront in the, in the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'd also like to acknowledge Brian Stevens, please, from the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Mayor, City Council, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, Brian Stevens, uh, 500 East Main Street. Um, the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce and the entire business community, I think, supports, uh, supports this. Um, I personally know about ADP. It's a very reputable company. ADP has, uh, has uh, facilitated my finances and other companies, and uh, I can tell you it's an outstanding workforce. One thing that I will say in addition to what my colleagues have said already is that this is an opportunity also for some of our transitioning military to find good high-paying jobs right here in Norfolk. And I know from talking to the mayor and some of the city council members, we want to keep as many of these transitioning military uh, here in Hampton Roads, here in Norfolk as possible. So it would be another opportunity. So I wholeheartedly agree with this, support my, uh, my colleagues, and, uh, and, and hope we get this approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Okay, that concludes the list of folks who have signed up to speak. All right, you can call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement, reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you all for coming down. We appreciate that. Thank you. All right, R4. R4 is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Peck and Poor Work Class Wings and Beer on property located at 1310 Collie Avenue by 7-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? 
before I say that, um, I would like to, we often have a lot of these restaurants, Marcus is walking out of the door. We often have a lot of these restaurants that um, come to us that are small businesses. And I know that we often have caterers who cater our dinner. I really would like to see us reach out to some of the small restaurants that come before us um, and give them an opportunity. I mean, we do pay; it's not voluntary that they give that they give us dinner. So we, it would be nice if some of those small restaurants could obtain um, city contracts and get on that rotation of um, the dinner providers sorry, for sorry, sorry. the council. You are really meddling now. You know that's. I'm t you know, I'm just saying it shouldn't be a limited <laughs> few. Um, but anyway, and we, we know Pollard is not going off the list, but we need to add some people to the list and make sure we get a nice, well-rounded number of folks that are able to provide services for the city and be paid by the city. So anyway, I vote aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or five. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through for Chick-fil-A on property located at 1205 North Military Highway by 7-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Mr. Hines is here to answer any questions if we have any from Warrington. Thank you. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Part six? An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as the Muse Writers Center on property located at 2200 Colonial Avenue, Suite 3, by 7-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, R7 and 7A, please. R7 is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Tap It Local on property located at 244 Granby Street. And for both items, Planning Commission recommends approval by 7-0 vote. Um, Mr. Hens here to answer any questions, as is the applicant, Mr. McGrath. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And 7A is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption at an establishment known as Tappet Local on property located at 244 Granby Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8? An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Glass Wheel Studio on property located at 116 to 128 West Olney Road. By 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance that adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9? An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a daycare home on property located at 3611 Bell Street by 7-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Patina Bergen is here to answer questions if we have any. Thank you. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Um, to the young lady that just stood up, hi, how are you? Okay. I, I really want to commend you in working closely with the Civic League and the Civic League working with you. You all did an awesome job at getting your possible business together and becoming a member of the Civic League. So I want to say thank you, much success to you, and we're pulling for you. Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10? An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Granny's Country Cooking on property located at 628 35th Street, Suite 636A and B by 7-0 vote planning commissioner. And Mr. Baker, Randy Baker's here to answer questions. Thank you. Okay, you dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Sounds good. Aye. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wibley? Aye. 
Mr. Frame, uh, R11. And Granny's is one of those restaurants we need to get on the rotation <laughs> too. So you see Breck after this is over. <laughs> Okay. Thank All right. R11. An ordinance granting a special yeah. exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Juice Bar Juices on property located at 245 Granby Street, Suite 247. By 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Okay. And Rick is here to answer questions again. Okay. Call Spence the Spence with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Frame. <laughs> Aye, R12 and 12A. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment named Lamia's Crepes on property located at 401 Granby Street, Suite B. Dispense with a charter requirement for eating the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. The, uh, the town of Lamia is, the, is just outside of Thermopylae uh, in Greece. Uh, where <laughs> the Greeks held back the, uh, with 300 Spartans held back the Persians. Oh, I just thought oh, that oh, that would just be a historic oh, thing right. for everybody to know. Oh, but uh, that being said, I, of course. <laughs> and I missed the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Isn't he supposed to Dr. abstain? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Marcus, are th some of these restaurants part of vibrant spaces? Yes. That's what I thought. So this is a really great example, and I hope you all recognize that, of the work that's been done with DNC and with Drew on um, getting these uh, businesses off the ground. Aye. Cool. Mr. Frame? Aye. 12A is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption at an establishment known as La Mia's Crepes on property located at 401 Granby Street. Spence with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through for steak and shake on property located at 2437 East Little Creek Road. By 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Right. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment named Starbucks on property located at 7550 Grammy Street, Suite 10. Dispensed with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Is this a relocation? Are they relocating the one on Main Street? The one on Main Street? Wait, 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 wait. Let, let Rick, uh, George, you want to answer questions? Not that I'm going to vote against it. I'm yeah, just but curious. we've got Rick in here as well as Tom Lisk and Kevin Sutton to answer one. questions if we have. Um, the next one is the one that's being relocated from um, the Selden to um, Granby Street. Okay. This is the existing one at Ward's Corner, and oh. it's moving to the new you. the new concept of um, that that Starbucks is introducing nationally, of trying to be open in the evenings and and having a limited. Uh, menu that serves wine and, and, and beer. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. That's what I meant. I meant the next Arm. one. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Okay. Got my Granby Street location. The big one on Granby Street. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, R15. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment named Starbucks on property located at 143 Granby Street, okay. suites 141 and 143. Spencer. And we have three folks. We have Rick and and uh, Kevin Sutton and Tom List to answer questions. Okay, call the roll. Spence with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? We could get lifetime coffee from Starbucks if they'd like to <laughs> give it to us. I vote aye. Ms. Johnson? <laughs> Excuse me, aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I had heard that the one at Ward's Corner, the previous one, is their number one store in Hampton Roads. Um, is, I've heard that number, and you can never get through the drive-thru because it's, it's always there. Yeah. And the Moe's is the number one store in Virginia yeah. at Ward's Corner. It's great. Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Aye. It is. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment named Rama Garden on property located at 441 Granby Street. Spence with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 
Um, R17. An ordinance granting a yeah, special right. exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Elegant Occasions by Christo on property located at 9605 Granby Street. Right, and the motion is con to continue for two weeks to the next month. Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Graves? Aye. If we did. Ms. Johnson? Aye. You can say it. Mr. Protegiru? If we could, just to make sure that it's for a further briefing from the Navy, because I think the the individuals are here that are uh, backing this particular Chris, project. Chris, uh, they were here earlier. They, they, they didn't sign up. Okay. So Good. just to make sure that they understand, it's a Navy briefing for us in two weeks. Well, it's a full. It's a it's a complete briefing from the Navy, but also from the from the planning department as well and the manager's office. Right. Okay. I'll agree to the continuance. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Um, R eighteen. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through for Chartway Federal Credit Union on property located at 132 Kempsville Road. And this matter has been requested to continue to February the 23rd. Yes, sir. Two weeks. Okay. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R19 and 19A? An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment named Humboldt Steel Corporation 2 on property located at 150 Bush Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for Mr. Renewal. Bowman is here to answer any questions. Any, we might have any. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. You're bringing Reading the ordinance and adopt. <laughs> Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Everybody's the comedian tonight. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 19A is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption at an establishment known as Humboldt Steel Corporation 2 on property located at 150 Bush Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Great. R20. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit a convenience store 24 hours, no fuel sales, known as 7-Eleven on property located at 1877 East Ocean View, and by 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And we have Mr. Romine here to answer questions, if we have any, along with Steve Blevins, um, uh, Jim Carides is here, as well as Amanda Schmidt. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I've uh, been asking 7-Eleven to space these out a little bit more instead of coming every month, but this is our continuous plan to um, address the 7-Eleven issues, and they will be tearing down um, an old 7-Eleven as part of this. So 7-Eleven um, is working with us on that request. Uh, and they are moving into another convenience store's location, um, so we're eliminating basically one out of this deal. Uh, and they have worked with the Civic Leagues on any concerns as well as the sign. I had a problem with the sign, but they've addressed that, so thank you for working with This them. isn't the Heritage Bank site? No, that's what we already approved that. That's under construction now. That, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. I. This one's on the Bay side, by the way. This is the one last 7-Eleven that is actually on the beach side of Ocean View, and it will be torn down as part of this. And it is literally crammed in with condos and apartments, are it? Yeah. So the one being torn down is the one on the bay. Bay, yes. And this one is on moving across the street down the road. Aye. Dr. Wibley. It hurts me to say aye. <laughs> Mr. Frame. Uh, aye. 20A. 20A is an ordinance for a special exception authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption at an establishment known as 7-Eleven on property located at 1877 East Ocean View Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 21, R21 and R21A? Yes. Standard. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as O'Connor Brewing Company on property located at 211 West 24th Street. Planning Commission by 7-0 vote recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Come on, Angela. Ask for free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. We can't drink beer Dr. at Wibley. the council meeting. 
It's sad. Again, Mr. Frame? Aye. 21A. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a microbrewery named O'Connor Brewery Brewing Company on property located at 211 West 24th Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R22. An ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Max Barge on property located at 4300 Collie Avenue by 7-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Paul, can I ask some questions? Sure. And Mr. And Rick is here to answer questions. If you have um, George, the Civic League um, had made some requests uh, for this property, I guess some demands. And they wanted to make sure, I don't represent this area, oh. but I was contacted. I actually could clarify some of this if you want. They wanted, the, yes, George. they wanted to make sure that that language had been included in the new ordinance. What were they? Um, they were worried about noise. Um, my understanding, yeah. So there were a number of changes made during the planning commission meeting. Um, one of which was to reduce the hours of operation of outdoor um, second was to eliminate the possibility of um, amplified music um, outdoors. Um, there was a, a um, original proposal to um, cut off part of the outdoor deck um, and the Planning Commission went and said, you know, the, if the issue is noise, cutting off a little piece of the deck doesn't solve the noise problem and that it actually looks a whole lot better and functions a whole lot better with the original plan. Um, so if you're going to have any outdoor dining on the water, then you might as well maximize it because that's something that the city needs more of, not less of. Terry, do you want to? Yeah. Um, this uh, issue was about um, perhaps the timing of the presentation when the Civic League did not feel that they had a chance to um, have a full understanding of what was going to happen. As George has said, Colonial Place initially was against this project. They backed off. They obviously are the ones that are most impacted by the noise. Um, I think the problem, frankly, with Highland Park is this is an area that is being quickly developed and traffic and parking and some of these places not turning out to be what was initially proposed has soured them a bit on new um, groups coming in. So um, I'm in favor of this, but I am hopeful that is the gentleman here that's, Rick, did the gentleman come? Okay, so um, I am hopeful that he understands that although they're legal as far as the parking goes, those number of slots are not going to accommodate 350 people, and the streets on Colley Avenue are tough on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. So it's going to be a big issue. I know he's looking at auxiliary lots, but most importantly, he has promised in his, his letter to the um, Civic League, and I'm disappointed he's not here tonight, frankly, um, that he would meet with them for every meeting. And um, I hope that we are following up on this and that we do not disappoint Highland Park one more time in a place that originally said, you're sure, family-oriented, great, which I would love, that doesn't turn and become something that we did not originally hear. So I, sure. I don't know what that takes with planning um, to do. but Terry, would this be appropriate, which we've done at some other establishments and put in uh, a special exception review after a year, eight months. Well, I months. mentioned that to Mr. Han, and Mr. Han and the developer or the guy is, who's not here said no, they weren't going to do that because they didn't want to pay the money and he didn't want to come back and present. And he's saying that he'll pull the project if he's pushed if, to that. If you were going to make a significant investment and you thought you could only amortize you the end of 12 months, right? I mean, you you might not be able to. But we've, we've but done I think that with what other, is, Tommy, I yeah. think what is, and I hear you, is but important I, is that we have a staff that is able to hold them to that. And that same 18 months, they can be pulled if they aren't doing as they have promised that they would do. So I guess what I'm asking, well, I know what I'm asking, is that planning or whoever it is <coughs> that is right on it and checking to make sure that plan, uh, parking is appropriate, 
noise abatement and um, all the things that the neighborhood is worried about are complied with. Rick's been very patient with me about this. I appreciate it. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yes, ma'am. So, so we will address um, the reduction um, in hours of the outdoor noise, correct? Yeah, it's, all, it's all in the ordinance you have in front okay. of you. Right. And, and the um, environmental issues are a moot point okay. because our, our um, inspectors make sure that, that that is not a problem. But parking, noise, um, you know, Rick tells me the ban's only for the occasional wedding. Well, we need to make sure that that is, in fact, the case. Let us know if that's, in fact, the case. Rick, I think we're okay. I mean, we're ready to vote, I think. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement. Disagree with something? You want to make it? I mean, no. Okay. Okay. All right. We're reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protezero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I don't appreciate the arrogance of the, I, it sounded arrogant to me. I mean, of, I mean, I understand the investment, but we've had other people that have come into the city, and if they're going to operate a good establishment, then they shouldn't have to worry about us shutting down, you know, when we do this. And I think there was another restaurant right down the street that we did the same thing. I think it was Chow that we put an 18-month year, uh, 18 yeah. month or something. There was one over there yeah, that we did that. So it's not something that we have never done. We've never done over there at the Highland. So I'm, I'm disappointed in that response. I understand the investment, but I don't like this response from the owner when we do that do we require them to pay again i thought i th rick said it was a 750 dollar reapplication them to pay again if we put that requirement on them to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing um <clears throat> we do not have a process um, by which we can waive the fee for that so if, when you ask them to come back and renew their special exception, it is at the, the full fee that um, they paid the first time. Marcus, we need a process that allows us to waive the fee for them having to come back if we put in place or at least significantly reduce it, especially if they've done what they're supposed to do. And this is just a matter of kind of like an administrative thing. They shouldn't have to pay all over again as if they're a new applicant. I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't okay. think we'll, we should have we'll, to we'll look into that. Yeah. Where are we in the aye. meeting, by the way? Aye. Okay, aye. okay. Mr. Smigel. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 22A is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off premises consumption at an establishment known as Max Barge on property located at 4300 Collie Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, R23? An ordinance accepting and appropriating the sum of $50,000 from the Virginia Brownfield Assistance Fund for additional environmental assessments at Harbor Park and Shoreline area. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R24. An ordinance authorizing a cost sharing agreement with Hampton Road Sanitation District for the relocation and replacement of Force Main SF007 at Buckman Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R25. A resolution naming the public city park located at the southwest corner of Duke and York Streets for Admiral David G. Farragut. Admiral Farragut, would you like to say anything? <laughs> I think they were, class, they were classmates, weren't they? Weren't you? I mean, you were neighbors, as I understand. Okay. Oh, Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protezero? Aye. Little Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R26. Mr. President, um, right. ordinances R26 through 32. Uh, right. May we Deal. take in a group? Yes. Uh, these are ordinances directing the city treasurer to issue refunds plus interest to the following. Metal Concepts, Inc. for $46,770.69 for overpayment of machinery and tools tax for years 2012 through 2015. Sure ID, Inc. Um, and the amount of $7,325.62 for overpayment of its business per personal property tax for 2013-2014. London Plax Coin Laundry, Inc. 
for $2,693.46 for overpayment of business personal property tax for 2012 through 2014. All Carolina Crane and Equipment LLC for $13,191.61 for overpayment of business personal property tax for 2015. Bayview Pharmacy Inc. for $31,476.05 for overpayment of business license tax for 2015. ABNB Federal Credit Union for $3,290.96 for overpayment of business personal property tax for 2014. AT&T Capital Services Inc. for $18,703.77 based upon the overpayment of business personal property tax for 2013 and 2016, uh, 2015. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinances and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protozero? <clears throat> Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. We got R33. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 25.1 37, section 25.1 75, and 25.1 87 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 as amended concerning parking rates for residents of the Central Business District, rates for parking in off-street facilities, and designating a parking garage. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Give an add-on. Additional items, Mr. President. Yes, sir. <coughs> First number R34 is an ordinance to amend and reordain section 2.1-58 of the Code of the City of Norfolk, 1979 as amended, to designate a committee membership position on the Military Economic Development Advisory Committee for the Executive Director of the Hampton Roads Military and Federal Facilities Alliance. Dispense with the charter for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Aye. And R35 is a resolution appointing Craig Quigley to the Military Economic Development Advisory Committee for a certain term. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Spiegel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.